G'day, this is Flat Tank Journey and I'm Chris. Welcome back to my shed. This week, working on the seat. I've had the seat apart. This is what I got with the project. I've ordered springs. I have to make a little mount for the spring perch to go to because it's missing and you'll get all that in one episode. In reality, it took me about three weeks because I cut the cord off the grinder in the middle, had to go and buy a new grinder and had to wait for parts and I messed around a lot. Anyway, you can enjoy the episode. The seat off the wedge tank always looked kind of promising to me. It's got seat springs. Um, these springs are missing, or, you know, pretty disheveled looking. And there's a lug missing off the back of the seat. But I'm hoping to be able to make that. Um, it was just tack welded in. And, you know, it doesn't look overly complicated to get a decent result. I'm assuming I can just put a nut on that and bolt that to there um, and do the same on the other side and attach new seat springs. That's the topic of the day. I bought new seat springs. Now, I don't know that they're the right springs, but we're about to see. But again, when you buy all this stuff, and I bought it cheap, admittedly, because I'm a tightwad, um, you're not really sure what you're getting. But these ones are hopeless. They're they're way too big and won't work. I'm going to start pulling these off and see how we go. Um, I haven't got a sandblaster yet because if I did I'd blast this first. But anyway, I'm going to have a go at these seat springs. They're not too hard to get off. They're in really poor condition and there's no sense in value in keeping them. Here's the new ones. The new ones, you know, are a generic size rather than um, having different sizes for different places. Will they work? Dunno. I'm gonna try. There's long ones, there's 14 of them, and there's seven or eight short ones. And I assume this goes in here somewhere. Uh, let's have a look at that and see if we can get them to fit. Well, alrighty, that came out okay. Weirdly, one spring missing. It's a bit of a shame. I arbitrarily decided to put the big end of the spring in the middle, but then worked out I'd have to turn some springs around to make room. This end, all the bigs are at the middle and the skinny end of the springs are at the front. Of course, the original springs are tapered both ends, but it's not too bad. I think it'll serve me well. Don't have a fortune in it, it's gonna look all right. The next job is to make this piece that is missing from there. Shouldn't be too hard. I'm gonna take some measurements, I'll bring you along for the ride. All right. This piece on the top is 16 millimeters. I don't know, what's that in the other measurement? Something. And they have about, same, about 15 or 16 of thread. And they go in about, 20, 19, or possibly three quarters. So they're possibly 33 mil long in total and 16, I'll say seven sixteenths. No, nine sixteenths. Let me go and see if I can find a bit of bar and uh, see if we can turn up one of these seat lugs and weld it on. Be a good result if I can. Scrap bin didn't fail me. I've got a piece that measures 16-ish. Vacillates between 16.0 something and 15 something. I reckon it's close enough. I'm going to chuck this up and um, measure off the right lengths. So I've just marked that. I want 15 mil in length at eight mil in diameter so that I can put a 5 16 thread on it. I'm gonna have a bit of a turn at it.
That measures 1544, so I've got a bit to take off. I'll bring you back when I've done it. Right, I'm just over 8 mil, like 8.03 or something. I'm going to cut a little chamfer on the front and a chamfer on the back, and that's hot. And try not to burn myself. Then I'm going to cut a thread, and I'll go from there. Normally I'd cut a little bit of a relief at the bottom of where the threaded piece is going to be, but I reckon that'll be a weak point, and because the spring sits on it, I don't need the relief to tighten the nut right down to it. Let me cut this thread, and then we'll have a look at the top piece and how it looks. Nothing sophisticated down here. Bit of the tap magic on the shaft, and a 5 16 cycle thread die because I put the chamfer on the end of the piece gives the die something to start on and it's cutting really good I could do with the back in the winter I've had some difficult challenging jobs lately nonetheless you might see those in the future that's cutting nice I'll have another go I always back the die out, clear the swarf off it, try not to cut myself or get it in your fingers because it gets infected. Don't be chintzy with the lube. I don't know why this stuff works, but it does. Makes a huge difference. There we go, I've bottomed out. Because these are split dies, you can tighten the die up if you want, and I might just tighten that up a little bit. If you tighten the die up with the grub screw, you can make another pass and it'll just crispen up or make the, the cut slightly deeper or not in this case. Oh, maybe at the bottom. No, hard to say. There it is, that'll do just nicely. And I'll get a cloth, clean up, and then I'll show you how we're going. Here's the seat on the bench, and here's the part we just made, or well, part of a part. It's looking all right. Here's the little piece right here. Not sure you'll be able to see it, but I've cut the threaded piece at the bottom, and then it looks like this piece is actually tapered, and it's tapered down to maybe half an inch. It's hard to measure a taper that's wedged in somewhere. I'm going to say it's tapered to over that, just over 13 mil. So that piece is also about three quarters of an inch long, 19, well, 1893, depends on how you hold your mouth, 19 mil, let's call it. So I need to have 19 mil with a taper that runs from 16 mil to 13 mil. I'm not real good at turning tapers. Actually, I'm really bad at it. Anywho, I'm gonna part this off at 19 mil, and then I'm gonna do something about turning a taper. And then I've gotta cut a slot. That'll be interesting. I want this to be pretty accurate. So. I've got the cutting tool resting against that shoulder that I cut, and I've zeroed out the longitudinal feed, I suppose. I'm gonna back the cutting tool out, and I'm gonna come across 19 millimeters. And because there's a dial gauge, and I know how far a millimeter is, I can see that that's 14, 15, 16, 17, that's 19 millimetres. I'm just going to give the lathe a bump 
and mark that piece where it, where it is. This is probably cheating and there's probably people who do it in a more sophisticated way. But now I've got a mark, I know if I stay to the headstock side of that mark, I am cutting, leaving a 19 mil end. I'm gonna part that off. Uh, I'm gonna stand over the top of the lathe and use cutting fluid. So I'll bring you back once I've parted it off. I'm back. Here's my little piece. Part it off and it vaguely resembles the right piece. Now's the difficult bit. I need to cut a taper. So I'm gonna chuck the threads up and try not to gall them. And then I'm going to try and turn a taper. I'm gonna do it with the top slide. And I really don't know how to do the math to get the right degrees. But it's very, very shallow. And I'm gonna take a very, very shallow cut. Again, as I said, I don't know what the math is. So I'm gonna start with two degrees of taper for no reason at all. And I don't know whether that's gonna work or not, but you're about to see, eh? <laughs> Currently somebody that's good at mathematics is screaming at me, don't do it, don't do it. So I've gone in about a millimetre on that two degree taper. I'm just gonna measure. Yeah, about a millimetre. And I'm about halfway down the piece. So I might be too sharp, I'm not sure. I'm gonna go in a quarter of a millimetre at a time with the cross slide and the top slide then take the cut. And yes, I messed myself up by moving the longitudinal slide and then taking it back and not being in the right place to start over. Bucket that up.
feels like it's getting close. Mm, not really. Let's cut a bit more. Okay. It's not perfect by any stretch. It's about half an inch on the end and I just overshot and it's about, I took about 0.3 of a mil off the other end of the taper. Is it gonna matter? Well, probably not. I'm just gonna use an angle grinder and cut a slot down this. But first, let's have a look at it against the seat and see what it looks like. Here's the two pieces. Oh, I hope you can see them. Maybe this piece is slightly high, I'm not sure. Um, I think it's going to be covered by the seat cover anyway. I might just get a file on that in the lathe and give that a little round over, or perhaps even a lick with the bench grinder. Let me do that and come back to you. I've rounded that end off in the lathe. I'm just going to give that thread a little tidy up for, to take out any scoring that I put in it with the lathe chuck. I don't think it's too bad. It kind of looks all right. Now they look a little more similar. I think I have the taper slightly wrong, but it's going over here and it's going to get painted and the seat cover's going to go over the top. And overall, I think it'll be okay. I'm going to measure this and work out what size slot I need to cut in that and it's about a quarter of an inch. No, let me have another go. 527. So maybe that's 3 sixteenths. That'll be a bit hard to do. Um, and the slot looks like the slot looks like it's about 14 or 15 mil deep because that piece was 19, don't forget. And we've got about four mil. So I'm gonna guess it's about 15 mil deep, that slot. Let me work out how to cut that and I'll get back with you. Back working on my seat. Last time we watched this, and perhaps you're watching this in order, I'd made the lug to go into here. And now I need to cut a slot in it. And I think from memory, that slot needs to be about 15 millimetres long. I'm going to mark this little piece and I'm going to cut a slot, trying to get it in the middle and see if we can get that to fit inside there and look about right. back. I've had a good result. I've widened out the slot in this little piece and now it fits and I've just released three springs and given it all a little bit of a tidy up with the grinder and it all actually fits. Before I zap this with the welder I'll get you off the tripod and let you have a little look. Hasn't been overly complicated. Here's a little piece I've made. There's the original slot. I'm almost in the middle actually. And then that will just slide over there. And I'm just at the bottom of my mark. I could be slightly further on this side. I think a little tap with a persuader and we'd be ready to give that a zap. Now on the other side, you can't actually see where it's been zapped from. So that's a bit hard to tell. I don't know whether it's zapped from the top. Perhaps. Um, we might zap this one from the top, at the back, and on the back on the sides. We'll see how we go. 
I'm hoping I don't regret the lazy man setup. I've just dragged the seat down to this end of the workshop and I'm just gonna try and whack this on the anvil and, and not move the welder, so wish me luck. Yeah, not bad. Made a bit of a mess, but not too bad. You know what I'm like as a welder. Okay, back from the welder. Made a pig's ear of that. Really did a shit job. Bit disappointed in myself. I got splatter everywhere. I've missed the mark. I don't see very well when I weld. I'm not really sure why. I'm going to let it cool off. Give it a brush down. It'll be right. It's under the seat. Who's looking? Besides me and the 300 of you that watch. All good. All right. I've given that a little bit of a clean up. And here's the outside. And the outside looks mint. The inside, oh, I think you can see. Well, have a look through that gap. And it looks a bit crappy. I've given it a bit of a go with a flap disc, and I think I'll get over it. Actually, I know I will, uh, because I've got over my welding before. I need to re-hook up these four springs, and then we'll have another look at it and I'll find the seat springs and see if we can get it together. Hopefully this will be the seat for my wedge tank. Or at least it's the one that came with it. I'm pretty pleased with it. As I continually say, I don't have the world in it. I bought springs. I forget what they were. I think they were 20 or 30 bucks. They weren't a lot of money. Made the piece for the back of the seat, which you saw, and that's the most fun. Pity about my welding effort and put the nuts on those spring perches. That's a terrible job. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you got something out of it. Hit the like button. Send me a comment, because I actually like that. Or if you'd subscribe, that'd be super too. Have a good one. Cheers.